We want to be free. That's the message of an increasing number of women in the Philippines who are trapped in marriages they cannot escape. That's because divorce is illegal in the Catholic majority country. The only other place in the world where this is the case is the Vatican. Calls by activists are growing louder for divorce to be legalized, but they face a powerful opposition. Our next report introduces you to a woman who's been fighting for more than a decade to legally be separated from her husband and who is now slowly losing hope. Stella Sibong's marriage was a nightmare from the start. Instead of partnership, there was abandonment. Instead of love, there was abuse. I filed a petition to annul my marriage so I could be free, so I could move on from the trauma that I suffered before. I need to be free so I won't be called immoral or a mistress. The Philippine mother of three has spent the last 11 years trying to end a marriage that she never wanted in the first place. Her parents forced her to marry when she became pregnant. There were times when I couldn't sleep and kept thinking, why is this so difficult? Why are we, the ones who experienced suffering, abandonment and abuse, being punished by the law? The law says divorce is illegal. Its main supporter, the country's powerful Catholic Church. Faith runs deep through Philippine society and many politicians are wary of contradicting the church on sensitive social issues. It can lead to stigma for those seen to dishonor conservative Christian values. I tried to save our marriage several times because I don't want to suffer the same fate as my mother, who was also separated, but it's really not possible, and my children suffer more from that. With divorce being no option, Stella Sibonga filed a request for her marriage to be annulled. After a costly legal process and a five-year struggle, a judge granted her wish, only for the decision to be overturned by the government. It's left Sibonga's entire future in jeopardy and that of her family, which now includes a new love. I asked my partner what would happen to us since we still can't get married. And he told me he will wait until we can do it. I finally found someone who loves me and completely accepts me with all my failures. And we still can't marry. We will still be considered illicit lovers. We'll always be illicit lovers. It's difficult to think I might die without getting the freedom I want because a lot of my colleagues already died. The Court of Appeals is yet to respond to Sibonga's latest request to reverse the last ruling. Until it does, all she can do is wait and hope. And joining me now for more context is DW correspondent Anna Santos. Anna, we just played a report where the protagonist had her marriage annulled by a court. Now, this in a country where divorce is not legal because it goes against Catholic values, but isn't annulment also against Catholic values? Absolutely. Ending a marriage under uh, circumstances that do not include death is against Catholic marriage. But in the Philippines, what this shows you is that you can freely choose to get married, but it is only the court who has the divine power to decide if it is only death that will separate you. Legally, this means that your petition for annulment can be denied by the court or later on even overruled. You know, Biresh, I've spoken to certain women. One was a celebrity whose husband had abandoned her. She had no longer spoken to him for many years. He was no longer offering child support, but her annulment was denied because of lack of evidence. Now, all of this just shows you how bizarre and problematic the laws are in the Philippines when it comes to ending marriages. So short of divorce, which continues to remain illegal, what options do women have who want to leave a marriage? 
Well, there is annulment and also there is the legal remedy of what is called legal separation, which is also quite bizarre in itself because that just means that you can separate your room and board, your home, you can live separately and also your assets, but you can't remarry. So it's kind of pointless in that sense. Um, so it's no surprise really that in you know conversations and in whispers in the Philippines, you will hear people saying that migration or living and working abroad has become the Filipino polite and discreet way of separating. The Philippines is a majority Catholic country and the Catholic Church, as we just discussed, doesn't recognize divorce. But is that also what the majority of Filipinos themselves believe? Actually, no, Baresh. You know, there's been a growing clamor for divorce. We've seen this in the public opinion surveys, which the latest one I think was around a few years ago, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. The public opinion survey showed that over half of those who were polled showed that they were in favor of legalizing divorce. Now, who are these people? These are the people who are on Facebook who have organized divorce advocacy groups. I've been following these groups from the start, Biresh, and in the beginning, they were a few hundreds, but now they have grown to over thousands of members advocating for divorce and in different chapters all over the world. And this just goes to show you that in the Philippines and also from Filipinos abroad, there is a growing clamor for the legalization of divorce. Considering how much the Filipino diaspora contributes to the GDP, it's time for legislators to listen to this push for legalization of divorce. So what is preventing legislators from listening to the voice of the people in the democratic Philippines? Well, there is a, the, the sluggish democracy, sorry, the sluggish bureaucracy, right, that has been, um, that has left the divorce bill kind of languishing, but there has been progress. Currently in the House of Representatives and also in the Senate, the divorce bill has been also getting a lot of support. So the clamor that we see on social media and in public opinion surveys is reflected back in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. So I would just echo Biresh what I've heard divorce advocates been saying, as long as we are living and breathing, there is always hope. There is always hope for second chances and finally the legalization of divorce in the Philippines. Uh, I'd just like to bring in uh, the aspect of the, the, the Catholic Church here because we keep hearing about its influence in the Philippines and Philippines political life. How big really is this influence? I think that over the past years, this influence has been on the decline. So you will see that in um, we were able to pass what was a controversial reproductive health law back in 2012. That was also a very controversial piece of legislation, which the church opposed vehemently, but that was able to be passed. So I think that is a growing indication more and more of how Filipinos are saying Obviously, there is, you know, the, the, the need for a church in your religious guidelines, but right. in our personal life, the church should no longer have a decision in that. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thanks so much for joining us today, Anna Santos. Thank you, Baresh.